Hi. Hi, guys. Hola, hola. Hola. Welcome to Spain. We're in Madrid. Yes, and this is Herzog Limeron's Caixa Forum Madrid. And it's awesome. Welcome to Aki Marathon. Roll intro. Uh -uh. Uh, introduction al rolo. How slick's my Spanish? Introduction al rollo. Rolling. Intro. Oh, the first job I had, Kev, um, was in a heritage uh, architect's office, Alum Lovell, now known as Lovell Cheng, but up in Brisbane, working with Richard Alum, and he was a brilliant heritage architect. He felt that there was no room for nostalgia. You had to do something contemporary and, and invigorating. Don't treat a heritage piece of architecture as a museum piece, because then you make it irrelevant. And, and also, what, what's a museum piece? Because what time frame of this building are you picking as the showpiece? Yeah. It has all this history throughout time. Which one do you celebrate? And it evolves. Buildings evolve. And so do you treat it, do you mummify it? Or do you bring it back to life? And Herzog and de Murren have brought this back to life in a way that I just love. And I actually stole in Union House. Our first episode. Our first episode. And that idea was, here's a heritage facade that's protected. Put the new things straight on and make them have this intimate conversation with bravery. But Conversation. Conversation. Or just one just drilling down on top of the other. Then Herzog and Demiran have defied gravity to put something really heavy on top of something even heavier. And, and then, then lifted it up. And, and made it float to create an incredible public space, which we'll see. But also in terms of the idea of a, something really solid, how clever is it? It looks like an incredibly solid core 10 building, but look at the top. Can you see the patterns? From the inside, that is so transparent and full of light. Mm. But from the outside, it looks monolithic and, you know, heavy. Love this building. So this site here we're standing on used to be a petrol station, right next to one of the busiest thoroughfares and all the grain buildings along here that, that runs through Madrid. And that, so that sounds terrible, a horrible petrol station. But we actually looked it up online and it was like a really early petrol station. The original one was cool. Yeah, that looked lovely. And I was kind of like, oh yeah, get rid of a petrol station. Then we saw it, it was like, oh, that's actually quite nice. Kind of cute, yeah. only 50s, yeah. And then you kept looking and they tore that down and put a generic petrol station. Anyway, it's a wrong program and a wrong site. Yeah, but they did something really clever, which was to remove it create a public plaza, dig up all the horrible fuel tanks, and they put down underneath us the auditorium. Because they already had to dig the hole, yeah. might as well put it there. Yeah. So you've got a dark space in a dark hole by function, and the rest of them mm. drag up out of the ground. And look, a lot of them are tourists, a lot of them are not tourists. They yeah. just hang out here. I love this building. Let's go look, let's go look. Oh. Let's go look. Come back. Oh, instantly cooler. Yeah, isn't it? Whew. And that's the entry. Yeah, but also you can just sneak through. There's another square on that side, so yeah. it's great, this really great public avenue. Oh. It is, what they have to fit in the standard door, it is a bit, yeah. How good is this? Is it a question or a statement? Both. Look at those handrails. That's pretty clever, isn't it? Instead of going straight down, they've just gone back. They're, 40, they're exactly 90 degrees each time. So that makes it incredibly stable because it's like they're all um, bracing each other. Hmm. You come straight up and you go to ticket office. Oh, yeah. They're all hanging. Look, everything's hanging. And they've kept it simple. Like, it's just, you can see all the services. They haven't, they've decorated the floor, but they've left the rest as real utility spaces. But everything here is hanging including this shop. Look at that. Rods and just frameless glass down the bottom. It's all hanging. Not only that, Kev, but the entire structure's hanging. Like oh, yeah. The reason the building floats on ground level is because these are all hanging off this massive steel structure. So they don't go, they're not in compression, they're actually pulling apart. Yeah. And the cloakroom, this whole thing. Yeah, which you can actually... <laughs> Move. You make a swing, can you? Because it's hanging. 
This is one of the few windows in the building. Like most of it's monolithic, and this and the one opposite are the only ones that look down into the street. You so can actually see the concrete added to the brick skin. Yeah. So the brick skin is really just a facade. It's a protective facade. Mm. So they kept that, but they added all that structure. Yeah. It's pretty extraordinary. And the depth of the concrete creating this seat, the magic number, 450, and then the angle of the glass so you don't get strong reflections. Yeah, and you also can look down to, well, it looks like just construction stuff out there. But yeah, <laughs> people going past. But you only get this a couple of times. The rest of the gallery is introverted and looking inwards. Which most galleries are. So we've just swapped sides from the other window that looks into the tight little street. And then this one looks all the way out to the gardens. And what's interesting about this spot <coughs> is that that's where the petrol station used to be. So they've removed the petrol station and Patrick Blanc... One but, of the pioneers of the modern vertical gun. Yeah, which I don't know about you guys, but we've seen it fail over and over again. But this is definitely the most successful one. This thing is flourishing. It's incredible. So Kev, you were saying that some of the other proposals were building on the old petrol station? Yeah, it's like the missing tooth. So I think most were just filling out that site, uh, whereas they, Herzog and Moron has used, left that open and actually used and added a program on top of this building instead. The old warehouse. The old power station. Yeah. yeah. And w it, it, that's on a circulation line? On a, on a, on yeah, that's, that's well, Prado, Prado Museum is just over there, one of the most important art institutions in the world. Mm. And that's almost just across the road. Mm. And this road here links to Cassiana, so it's a major thoroughfare that cuts right through Madrid. All the important buildings, all the grand buildings along here. So that petrol station did feel a bit out of place. What did um, Herzog and Amurin describe it as um, uh, planting the wrong grapes? Like it couldn't grow, this area couldn't grow because they'd planted the wrong grapes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is interesting because we've got Rena Sophia just around the corner as well by mm. um, Jean Nouvel. Well, sorry, the additions by Jean Nouvel, but the original Rena Sophia was there as well. So art institutions was already here. Yeah. Tyson's up the road, adding another art institution and a very public program, being able to walk through this. I think that's, that's quite important. Yeah, absolutely. The intuition to fill in the gap, though, is an understandable one. Like, it is quite a consistent street frontage, so you feel like it's the right thing to do. Mm. But it's great that they've taken a step beyond that and thought a public plaza, as you just said, is a much more generous gesture. Massive steel structure and hanging that open undercroft. These are all pulling in tension. And the other thing as well is the stainless steel floor is triangulated. Oh, it yeah. makes me wonder whether that's the same triangulation that you see in the undercroft. Oh, yes. Which makes sense because, well, in some ways, because those lines coming down, they will be the structural points where the folds are. Yeah, so this probably keeps going for like a metre or more and then it's triangulated back upwards to create like a 3D truss. And they've hmm. just simulated that here. So yeah, you're right, there's probably steel beams going along on each of these lines. Back to it. Herzog and Moron, if you're watching, you can verify. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, comment, comment, subscribe. <laughs> this is a great section, a wayfinding of building. This is the plaza level, when we come in. And you actually bypass that, you gotta come up here. That's the entry level, really. And then you've got two major galleries. They're pretty much galleries. They're big boxes with artwork that curators can curate. That doesn't really matter. So there's the roof that we will go to and have amazing food and drink and light. Uh, and then underneath, you can see it's actually a big theatre underneath the plaza. And the plaza I, used to be? Well, this used to be a, a, a petrol station. So I wonder if that's actually what the tank was. Oh, they, the, they pulled the tanks out of there from the petrol station. Possibly, yeah. yeah right. And so huge program, they, they were able to sink it underground, which is great. Yeah. And so that all looks like, that, that looks like a level, but in fact, that's all open straight through. The oh, yeah. yeah, you can go all the way through. Goddamn lights, so low. <laughs> she said it was like ice cream. I said, is that just like a, like a slushy coffee? She's like, yeah, but it's a lot like ice cream. She wasn't joking. This is ice cream. Shit, it is thick. It also cost more than the tapas and beer that we had last night. Like a whole night of like two euro beers. And How much is this? A lot. 
I had to take out a mortgage. <laughs> oh my god. It's dessert coffee. Yep. Yeah. Hi. Oh I didn't see you there. <laughs> what do you, you come here often? Yeah. <laughs> These are Herzog in the mirror, aren't they? These lights? Yes, they designed them. There's a lot of dangly bits. <laughs> They do look like upside down sperms. Yeah. They're like the TV screens in Prada. Prada in Tokyo. In Tokyo. Yeah. Not important thing to do when you come to Caixa for Madrid is to come in the morning. One of the main reasons is that is east. So you've got the sunlight hitting it. Summertime's great, you get this beautiful green greenery across the botanical gardens, but you also get this dapple light coming in. If you come in the afternoon, the sun's going to be over in the west. You're not going to get that same effect. This is quite a beautiful effect. Yeah, and you get the view to the gardens, but it, it's really strategic, this screen, because Herzog and Amaron have worked really hard to make this look like it's a solid, internalised space. Mm. And so from ground, you kind of glance at it and you think this is all solid core 10 steel. But of course, when you get close to it, it's actually quite transparent. Yeah, and it's a great place to see the context of the roofs and buildings around. And you notice there are actually columns here. Yeah. One, two, three, four over there. The use of sustained steel, the mirror effect, well, it's an illusion to hide the columns, really. Yeah, there, there seems to be a lot more glass than there really is because of that reflection. And we've seen that a bit through Spain. On this yeah, trip, seen yeah. it a few times. Mm. You know how you just said about the roof tiles, looking out at the roof tiles? I really, we've noticed a lot, haven't we, that they're always thinking about looking down onto roofs, so they clad a lot of their own roofs, which is awesome, instead of looking at dodgy gutters. So many Hudson and Warren buildings have really spectacular stairs. Yeah. And I've I not... think that's quite a focus in a lot of the work. Usually quite curvaceous. But it is the main circulation of the building. Apart from the lift, everyone takes the stairs. It, they also seem to spend a lot of time on the urban gesture, on the stair, but a lot of the rest of the building, in many, much of their work is, you know, it's utilitarian. It allows for change and it's robust. And you see that here as well. One other thing not to miss is to go downstairs. Oh. Hmm? What? Oh no, down, downstairs. Yeah, yeah, because that door there is actual ground level. Oh, that's, okay. That's why it's an escape. So we're now at the subterranean level. There's a pond here. That's actually in Corten Steel. It's the same material as the roof. It's, it's all rusting away. It's got this sediment. It's pretty cool. Come, no, come in here. What's down there? Oh, oh, I get it. So this is where they have the vents underground. This is under the old... Plaza? Yeah, so this is the old petrol station. Must be. And so there were probably tanks buried in here. Cool timber seat there. Yeah, isn't that lovely? So you could imagine coming in gathering here before an event and then just disappearing down. It's having some drinks and things like that. There's also another theatre over here. Oh, is there? Behind there. Oh, you can actually see through it. It's perforated. Yeah. And here the kids. I think there's people in there. This is amazing. This is um, <clears throat> just expanded metal. So all they've done is pressed expanded metal. So it looks like something really bespoke, but it's actually quite straightforward. And... How many repetitions are there? They all look different. Yeah, but there's not many, are there? Because they all meet with the same detail. Do you reckon they're stamped and then just... Maybe it's the same one. They are the same, the same one. one. They are the same one. And you just rotate it 90 degrees. But it all looks very different. Because it's got exactly the same junctions. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. So this is super cost effective and it looks amazing. Creating a variety out of a single module. Yeah, and also because... It is perforated. That's probably great for it. It is great for acoustics. It's really mm. sort of... Because it's quite, quite soft here, sound. Yeah. 
and it also means that it's easy to deal with services and things like that as well. You just pop a panel out mm. and go to your services. And did you know this weird little pattern is actually used on the facade? Oh, what? It's the pixelation version, like we're upstairs. Oh, yeah. so that's a pixelated version of this. Yeah, and if you look outside what seem like solid panels, they do have a slight decal. Oh, amazing. Here's a, here's a very uh, Archie Marathon move. You ready for this? Look so, behind you. Yeah. So a pretty simple space. You've got panels that can be open and there's probably chairs and tables and things like that. And then this great little recess bit. I could imagine a little party just sitting around here, yapping away. You could have a great party, couldn't you? Big table here and dancing over there. It even does it at this, look, above you as well. So it's a real sort of carve into the timber form. Hmm. The lighting could be better. It reminds me a bit of Snow Hetter's reindeer pavilion. Glass box to watch reindeer and they've just then put a timber. Oh yeah, that one. Yes. Carved yeah. Carved away from it. This is lovely. Should we get out before we get thrown out? Yep. Yeah. No. <laughs> no humans. <laughs> Um, you are allowed in here. If you just came down the right entry, we didn't have to sneak through it all. <laughs> See this everywhere. Look. Super efficient waste management through Spain. Australia could learn a thing or two. Or America. Oh. So it is the same, that's the same panel, is it? Or is yeah. it just a flat panel? I think that's all rusted. If I stirred it, watch this. Oh, okay. Dust cloud. To me, that just seems like something architects would geek out about and everybody else would be like, when are you gonna put the pond in? Looks like a mistake. We're done in here? We're done. You think the lighting is also re reflective, huh, get it? Reflective of the flooring? Triangulations? Yeah, it's not on the... No, it is on the same line. No, some of them are on the same line. But it's definitely triangulated. The stairs that wrap up, it is like the triangulated form just collapsed on itself. You can see it right there. Yeah, and that's the stair, isn't it? Like, that's it winding up on itself. Just pushes down and create an entry. You notice they also use the black glass to hide the service core. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, that's the, that, yeah, right. That's the three structure that holds up the building. Yeah, you've got the glass and mirrored ones, and the only one that comes all the way to the ground is actually the entry. And it reflects everything around. You can see people going through it. Hey, where are you going? I want to play. I want to play. Get back here. Come on. Let's... Is it right that this, you said this was a water feature at some stage? Well... All that is meant to be a water feature originally. The water is meant to cascade down. It's quite a cooling microclimate that's created. I think, I think because of the drought in Spain at the moment, most of the places we've been to that had water feature has been turned off. Yeah, we haven't seen any. And there's some that are quite obviously designed for evaporative cooling, like in courtyards. And, mm. and you can see where there's fountains that are meant to be like misting the whole thing and they're switched off, which sucks because it's hot. It's hot out there, but this has really moderated the temperature, hasn't it? Yeah. I, th I guess there's a lot of thermal mass in there as well, behind the steel. Yeah. And there. It's shaded. Yeah. And it works. The Forum building in Barcelona, I'm not a huge building by Herzog de Moron in Spain that has a huge undercroft. Yeah. Very articulated undercroft again, but in the peak of summer, it's actually quite refreshing. Yeah. The sea breeze coming through it. Winter time, probably not so. Yeah, but like they've kind of nailed it, haven't they? Especially there. But same here, like the evaporative cooling coming off the ocean or the sea in Barcelona, or coming off the park, and then this thermal mast shade, you know, they've offered just huge areas of shade. Mm. And then you get the breezes coming through, and it is so comfortable um, in both, of the, both this and that building. 
But another great thing about this space is you get glimpses out from back over here in this neighborhood, very tight streets out to the park and out through the different parts. They, Could you imagine that, you know, most buildings, they don't they take, touch the ground, you have to go around it. This is a public space. Yeah. So they're completely freed up within reason. There's service calls and things that comes down. Stairs, of course, to get up to it, but they freed up as much as they could. That's a great point. Because Herzog and Marin, you can tell they're interested in publicly funded buildings offering public space. And that's hmm. the reason they go to all this trouble. Yeah. A lot of trouble in the case of this building. Like, we've walked around this place for days going, how do they do this? It's like a heritage facade that is floating on this steel. How do they do it? And we've looked up some construction photos. Mm. Still don't know how they did it, but it seems like they went to a sh lot of effort. So they spent all that money, really, it's for the public program. You don't even have to pay to go into the museum to enjoy this building. Yeah. And I think that's quite remarkable. The same thing as the Hong Kong episode we did on Taekwun that they did. Again, this public space, which is rare in Hong Kong, this public space that's been handed back over from an old prison. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And good... It's like a reinvention of, of public squares. We were talking about this the other night with the whole Archie Marathon team sitting in a beautiful square. And we were talking about good public space and how it leaks and connects into the rest of the streets. Mm. And that's what they've done here in a very different way. Instead of, as you said, building an object you've got to walk around, it, the public realm of streets leaks through this space mm. in a gorgeous way. And you can just see people that have nothing to do with the function of this building hiding, under, getting respite from the sun, yeah. and having a conversation, then heading off again. Mm. And you're seeing people just cutting across. Yeah. And similar to your point about that view, like the way they modulate the heights, you see this as well in Barcelona. You get to points where it's, you, can, you can touch it, yeah. and then on other areas, it's just so high, it's grand, like mm. it's grand entry. And they've done that beautifully here as well, mm. shifting those heights. But it seems random just because of the nature of the architecture, this triangulated form, but mm. it's subtle as hell. This gap between the existing, that's a hotel, to this. I mean, look how low this is. Yeah. And that's the original brick wall. So there used to be in the photos a stone wall, and they said that that was protected, and they removed the stone wall somehow and held that up. The other cool thing is the windows themselves do not obey existing openings. They're dictated by the internal program. And I think they weren't really windows, windows anyway. This is a power station. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So they're more decoration than yeah. actual aperture. Yeah. But I think this transition from this busy street, the plaza, and then you've got this little gap, and then you enter in this low space and just getting dark. I think that's quite a wonderful little transition. And it's got to be like 12 degrees cooler just there. <laughs> it <laughs> does, yeah, in the sun. Look at this pond. Yeah, but look, some of the grating from upstairs they've used here as the overflow. Oh, yeah. And the folding, even though it's done in stone, is very reminiscent of the folding that happens in the Undercroft. The other thing I get really excited about, the way they've done it, it's like they've, they're dedicated to flatness. That's the way it appears. But what it does because of the harsh Madrid sun is you constantly get this shadow play. Like, I, I love this because we've been here for days, we've watched it at different times of the day. Like, it seems like a flat facade. It shows all the details in the Heritage Building, but also the stamped facade is constantly changing. Depending on the, the direction of the sun, it either looks very flat or it looks really textured. Thanks for watching, guys. Have, have you been? And when I say guys, I mean gender non-specific. Can we clear that up? <laughs> what do you think, peeps? Uh, have you been? Do you want to come? Leave a comment. Uh, what do you think? Um, you know, it's a great civic building. I thought you were going to say the best. Oh, this is the best! So we've just wrapped up Archi Marathon Spain Portugal 23. Okay, go to Instagram, there'll be a link down below. Go to Instagram, put in hashtag Archi Marathon SP23. Link below, and you'll see all these shenanigans. We had like the most incredible group of mainly students and young practitioners join us. From we all around the world. Yeah, USA, from locals, Valencia. Spain, yeah. 
Um, so much fun. Definitely go check it out. But yeah, best thing ever. One of our peeps on this tour, Felix, it is absolute gem. Everything was awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and he would, wouldn't he? He'd say, this is the best. He'd just eat an olive. Oh, oh, oh. What, would he, what face would he pull? This is the best thing ever. He'd say about everything. Looking out of a train window. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> if he was here right now and say, what do you think? This is the best thing ever. <laughs> so many. We had so much fun. Yeah. Really good people. Yeah. You just sort of make these lifelong connections. So I cannot wait to see what these people do in the future as well. Because it's like a lightning bolt to your creative nerve, isn't it? Mm. Amazing conversations. Yeah. So check out that link. Check out the photos. Uh, next one. It's probably going to be Japan, which we know is going to be quite popular. So keep an eye out and get in early on that. But this guy? Yeah. This guy? This guy. Kaiser Forum. But guy, you mean? Oh, gender non-specific building. That, yeah, that's all we've got to say about this guy. <laughs> Any last words? Yeah, okay. Before I kill you in front of everybody. <laughs> Last words. <laughs> he's always looking, he's worried somebody's going to like stab him in the back, I reckon. I wonder why. So you said, any last words? Any last words? <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> no, no? Yeah, no, no last oh, words. Okay. And Let's get out of heat. The last word I've got is when you come to Madrid, look out. For dog shit. For dog shit, it's everywhere. Like it is really hard doing a tour and looking up at buildings while you're also looking down for landmines. Look, they even like try to say, look, they give you bags and things. They don't use it. Madrid or Spain. Yeah. Stay hydrated, people. Stay poop free, people. Stay poop free. <laughs>